the old guidelines started really back in the 80s. That was really before we had any of these new drugs called statins. They're very strong drugs for lowering cholesterol. They looked at all the evidence they had and they said, well, let's make the LDL goal less than 100. LDL is bad cholesterol. And that was their best guess at the time, but what we've learned since then, as we've done now about 28 of these statin trials, is that your LDL cholesterol doesn't make any difference. Statins reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke regardless of your cholesterol level. We really want to avoid bias. You know, we want to look at all the evidence and come up with the best conclusion. We actually paid an independent contractor to go find all the studies that met these criteria. Uh, and then bring them to us, and they graded them for quality. So we only looked at the ones that were good quality. It was quite a extensive, systematic, deliberative process. I mean, we couldn't, we didn't come in saying this is what the next guideline is going to be. Let's just go back and find some papers that justify it. I mean, we really had to start with the evidence and move forward. And so I think that's why these guidelines are a little different than they were in the past. The risk calculator, you can go online and you can enter your age, your sex. Uh, your total cholesterol, your HDL or good cholesterol, your blood pressure, uh, whether or not you're on a blood pressure medicine, whether or not you have diabetes, and whether or not you smoke. And so those are the risk factors. Um, so if you have any of those, you, they place you at risk. And so anyway, you can go and you can calculate what your risk is of having a heart attack, stroke, or dying of one in the next 10 years. And we thought it was important as the panel that the doctor and the patient decide together if they should start a, a statin, which is, you know, a long-term treatment. Uh, there, there is a potential for side effects, not much, but I think people need to go into it open-eyed open and really, you know, understand that there is a benefit and it's important. One of the people who had reviewed our recommendations early on also works in this field but was not on the panel, and he disagreed with our risk calculator, and he had, he's an investigator at Harvard, and they have their own set of data. It turns out that his, his people, you know, that he developed his risk calculator were really healthy white people who are health professionals. So those are kind of educated people who actually are at lower risk. We know that for a fact. And his, so he said that his, you know, our calculator way overestimated risk when he applied it to his population. And we said, well, of course it did. <laughs> That's not surprising because you low, have a low risk population. Our equation came from five cohorts sponsored by the government to study both black and white Americans, men and women. And so it was a very large group of people. And we really think this pooled equation with the five cohorts in it really gives a better estimate for the average American. And so we encourage people to use it. We really want people to have a healthy lifestyle. And, but we recognize it's really hard for a lot of people to do it in our modern society. Um, and for those, as people get older, often, the, you know, the thing that's going to help them most prevent heart attacks and strokes is the use of one of these statin drugs. And not to be afraid of it, to really have a, a discussion with their doctor if it's right for them.